Welcome to Biology My Passion. I am Soumya Harikrishna. Now we are learning the chapter, the fundamental unit of life that is cell. In the previous videos we learned the discovery of cell and also about the features of the cell. In that we learned cell membrane. Actually a cell has got three features. A cell membrane or a plasma membrane, nucleus and cytoplasm. In the previous video, we discussed in detail the characteristic of cell membrane, why is it called selectively permeable membrane, the processes by which substances move in and out of the cell, that is diffusion and osmosis, significance of osmosis and endocytosis, and the composition of plasma membrane or cell membrane. So today, we have to study the next entity of the cell, that is nucleus. But before we move on to nucleus, we will learn about cell wall. So where do you find cell wall? Cell wall is found only in plant cells. We know a cell has the outer covering called a plasma membrane. That is for animal cell and plant cell. But in plant cell, in addition to this plasma membrane, there is one more covering that is called a cell wall. So cell wall is present only in plant cells. So, outermost covering in a plant cell is cell wall. Outermost covering in an animal cell is cell membrane or plasma membrane. Okay. So, then uh, it is made up of a complex sugar called a cellulose. Okay. So, what is cell, cell wall made of? Cellulose. But don't think that all cell walls are made up of cellulose. Because in plants, cell wall is made up of cellulose. Apart from plants, bacteria, fungi, they all have cell wall. But their cell wall material is different. So plant cell wall is made up of what? Cellulose. So when we learned about osmosis, we learned, suppose one animal cell is put in a hypertonic solution. We know hypertonic means what? Outside. Uh, that is hypertonic means water concentration is less or the solute concentration is high. So water will move out of the cell by exosmosis. As a result, the cell shrinks. Right? So this is about animal cell. What about plant cell? So this is a cell wall. And here is the plasma membrane. Which is very close to the cell wall. Okay. So, if this plant cell is put in a hypertonic solution, then what happens? Water again goes out of the cell because exosmosis happens. But here, the cell cannot shrink as such because the cell wall being rigid will maintain its shape. It will stay there. It cannot shrink. So, what happens? The cell wall will stay there but only the contents of the cell start withdrawing from the ends. Right? So now you can see a gap is forming. Water is moving. The contents are shrinking away from the cell wall due to exosmosis when the plant cell is placed in a hypertonic solution. So this process is known as plasmolysis. Okay. So, so the contents of the cell withdraws from the cell wall when placed in a hypertonic solution due to exosmosis that process is called a plasmolysis. So if you continue like this after some time what will you see the cell wall will be here it is again shrinking and finally it will come to the center and later to one side. So by the time the cell will die so all the water has gone out but in this situation if you can provide water or you can place it back in a hypertonic solution this can again become completely filled. So uh, this process is called a plasmolysis. Imagine if the cell is in a hypotonic solution. So we know hypotonic solution means what? The water keeps coming inside the cell by endosmosis. As a result, cell swells up. So if uh, unicellular organisms like bacteria or some fungi or um, some plant cells, if they are in the water, hypotonic condition, fresh water, we know water keeps coming in. As a result, the cell may swell up and beyond a limit, it may burst also. But is that happening? No. How is it possible? That is, whenever water is coming in, the cell is swelling up. The cell will apply a pressure on the wall when it is swelling up. Right? Now, the cell wall will apply an equal but opposite pressure back. So, since these forces are equal, that will prevent the cell from bursting. So, cell wall protects the cells of fungi, 
bacteria and plant cells from bursting even if placed in a dilute or hypotonic solution. The same way cell wall gives rigidity to the plant cell. Cell, cell wall protects the plant cell and gives it a shape. So these are the functions of cell wall. Let us now move on to the next part of the cell that is nucleus. Most of the cells possess a nucleus which is the controlling center of the cell. Suppose if you see a plant cell, the nucleus is located to the side of the cell. Why? Because in plant cells, in the center there is a large vacuole. Because of the presence of this, the nucleus is to the side. Whereas if you see animal cell, the nucleus is in the center of the cell. Now let us see the structure of a nucleus. So nucleus is a round structure and it has got two membranes, double membranous structure. So to draw that, uh, you have to first draw two circles. Okay? And you can rub here and there and join that part. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to maintain that shape. Okay? So, this is the outer membrane of the nucleus and this is the inner membrane. And here the pores are, this is called a nuclear pore. Because this nuclear pore is for transport of substances or communication between nucleus and a cytoplasm. Now, inside the nucleus, there is a darkly stained structure here. This part is called a nucleolus. This nucleolus actually helps in controlling the cell division and a DNA copying etc. And also, uh, there is a jelly-like substance inside the nucleus which is called as nucleoplasm. How cytoplasm is present inside the cell within the nucleus, nucleoplasm. And uh, you will see uh, there is a thread-like structure inside a cell nucleus during the resting phase. So this is called a chromatin material. Okay. So you must have heard of a few terminologies like chromosomes. DNA, gene, chromat. Okay. So we have to clearly learn where do you find these structures or what are these structures. So first chromosomes. Chromosomes are actually road shaped structures like this present in the cell when it is about to divide. So only in the nucleus of dividing cell you will find rod shaped structures and they are called a chromosomes. Okay, so if you open this chromosome part because it is highly coiled structure. So if you open that you can see that is nothing but it is made up of a structure like this. Okay, so this structure is called a chromatin. Okay, so that is what is seen here. So this is the chromatin. Okay, so when the cell is not dividing, if you look at the nucleus under a microscope, you will see a thread-like structure. Okay, so that thread-like structure is called a chromatin material. And when the cell is dividing, what happens? The chromatin material will coil to form a road shaped structure called a chromosome. Is that clear? So chromatin material is becoming chromosome at the time of division. So time of division if you look at the nucleus you will see only chromosome you cannot find chromatin. Otherwise if you are seeing a normal cell without dividing you will see only chromatin you will not be able to see chromosome. Okay. Now so these two are clear now. Now what about DNA and G? So here, if you look at this chromatin in detail, so this chromatin is made up of two things. This uh, black color, this thread-like structure is actually having a shape like this in the form of a double helix. It's like this. Okay? So if you draw a large, it is like this. So this is called a DNA 
और डी ऑक्सी राइबो न्यूक्लिक एसिड ओके सो न्यूक्लिक एसिड मीन्स इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस द जेनेटिक मेटीरियल इज कॉल्ड न्यूक्लिक एसिड दे कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स डी एन ए और डी ऑक्सी राइबो न्यूक्लिक एसिड एंड आर एन ए और राइबो न्यूक्लिक एसिड so we have dna as our genetic material rna is found as genetic material in some viruses so uh, dna genetic material means what it contains the information for our characters so we are looking like our parents so we have the features like our parents why because we have inherited their dna okay so the dna contains information for all our characters so this dna is actually coiling for making the chromosomes right so for that some proteins are used so these red color parts are the proteins okay so when dna and proteins are coming together then that is called a chromatin so chromatin has protein and dna protein is just used for packing that dna or coiling that dna but dna is the actual information containing material so in which form the information is present it is in the form of certain sequences of nitrogen bases all those details you will learn in higher class okay now uh, so i think dna is also clear so dna is the genetic material which will coil around protein to form a structure called a chromatin that chromatin Uh, again uh, coil further to form a row shaped structure called a chromosome during cell division okay now the last part is g so this dna is a long molecule okay it has different parts having information for different characters so those units are called a g so this is gene 1 or this is gene 2 like this thousands of genes are present in dna for example maybe this uh, part the information for your skin color or this part information for your height so like that for every character genes are controlling the character okay so genes are actually the functional unit of dna which is controlling or carrying information for a particular character okay so hope all these are clear dna is our genetic material but dna is found as chromatin associated with the protein in a cell but at the time of division that will again condense to form a row shaped structure called a chromosome uh, dna has functional units called a genes which is controlling certain characters so if we discuss the functions of nucleus i told you nucleus is like the brain of a cell right so brain controls all the functions of our body the same way the nucleus is controlling all the functions of the cell it determines the way in which the cell will uh, develop or the uh, all the activities of the cell also controlled by nucleus and also it controls the cell division hope you enjoy my teaching if so please like share and subscribe to my channel biology my passion